Yo, what's going on guys? It's King Tuts Pro and welcome back to another Photoshop tutorial. In today's tutorial, I'm going to show you guys how to create the walking dead effect, uh, the text effect in today's tutorial. And this is all the uh, layers that, you know, created this little thing here that I created in this uh, effect here. And it's really cool. If you guys have never seen The Walking Dead, it's an awesome TV show. I would highly suggest you guys check the TV show out. It's awesome if you guys like zombies. Anyways, I decided to do this tutorial because Halloween is almost here and why not make a awesome tutorial with this. And before you guys get started, you are going to have to download a file. Um, in other words, you would have to download some files, but uh, these are all of the files that you would have to download. But because I was nice, I decided to just, you know, compress all of the files, put them all together in a zip file. So all you have to do is just download this zip file. Just right click and click uh, unzip or just double click it if you're on a Mac. If you're on Windows, you're going to have to use WinWire um, or just use the built-in one for PC, I believe. So you just right click and extract the files and you should have the files here. And I am working on a Mac, of course, but everything should work the same. Some stuff might look a little bit different, but that's okay. We should be able to achieve the same result. Without any further ado, let's go ahead and get started with the tutorial. So go ahead and go to File and go to New to create a new document. So give your new document a name. I'm going to just name it The Village in this case. Document um, it should be a Clipboard. The width, you want to go ahead and change that to 1920. And the height, you want to put 1980. And then the resolution should be at 72 and the background contents should be set to white. So just click OK and everything should be set like this. Um, and this should be set to black and white, of course. So once we've done that, we're going to go ahead and uh, make sure you're on your background. And we're going to change the foreground color. Now we're going to be doing this a lot throughout the tutorial. So just keep that in mind. We are going to be changing the foreground and the background colors a lot. So double click on the foreground color and change the hex code to uh, 2A1E20. I will be posting the hex codes on the screen so you guys could check it out. So just pause the screen, go to photo, uh, Photoshop and then just um, type it in there. So if I go too fast, of course, you could always pause and come back. So this is the code here. Just click OK. And for the background color, just double click on the white square and type in uh, 1A uh, 0, F, 1, and 3. So click OK. We should have the foreground and the background colors changed. So once we've done that, we're going to pretty much, uh, with the foreground color selected, um, we're going to go ahead and just push uh, Option or Alt on a PC and Delete. And that will fill it with the foreground color, which is this one here. So once we've done that, we're going to go ahead and make a copy. So just click your background and just click this right here to create a new uh, layer with the same layer that we have uh, selected, which is the background, and that should make a background copy. So once we've done that, we're going to go ahead and go over to Filter, and then we're going to go to Render, and then we're going to go to Clouds, and that will just render some clouds onto our document. Now once we've done that, we're going to go ahead and double click on the background, uh, on the background copy layer, double click on there, and mine will look a little bit different uh, because I'm on uh, Photoshop CC 2015. Uh, which is the latest version of Photoshop, but if you guys are running an older version of Photoshop It might look a little bit different, but everything is exactly the same So uh, we're gonna go ahead and add a inner glow So click on this and set everything that you see here. So blend mode is set to screen Opacity is actually set. Yeah, it's set to 50% uh, Zero and then for the color we're gonna click on that little square and the hex code should be set to D zero F B C one click. Okay. And the technique should be set to softer. The source should be set on edge. The choke is zero size is 15 contour is left the same range is set to hundred and jitter is to zero it's set to zero and make sure when you click on the gradient, uh, make sure it goes from uh, the color we have selected, which is the D zero F B C one and it goes to transparent, click OK, and make sure we only have the color one selected. So once we've done that, we're going to go over to gradient overlay, make sure you click on the square or on the name here, and we're going to go ahead and change the blend mode to hue, so yours is going to be set to normal. Just click on hue, which is here, which will only affect some color throughout the uh, canvas here, or our background color. The opacity should be at 70%. 
and the gradient we're gonna go ahead and change that so it should be set like this but just click on the little box there make sure you select this one it's good, probably gonna be set like this so just click this one here so it should go from black to transparent click the little box here and go to color click on that box and change the hex code to uh, what it was it let's see it was uh, so I just clicked on that so in other words it'd be black to transparent click on the little box click the little box again and the hex code is 016F6E so it's kind of gives you like a um, little greenish light green color click OK and the other color on the right side is a mustard yellow so it's FEE847 -E Let's click OK, click OK once more, and the opacity, you want to go ahead and change that to 70%. Uh, make sure everything is set like this. Uh, the style is set to linear. The angle is at 107 degrees, and the scale is at 138%. So once we're done with that, just uh, click OK. And once you're finished applying the layer style, we're going to create a levels adjustment layer. So make sure you're on the background copy. Go to here and click on levels and uh, we can go ahead and change the uh, shadows so the shadows value we're going to change that to 8 we're going to change the gamma to 1.21 and that is pretty much it there so just click this little arrow here to minimize that so we just did this here so we went from here to this to that cool so once we're done with that we're going to go ahead and add the grunge brushes to the background. So create a new layer and name the layer uh, to whatever you want. I'm going to just leave it like that for now. Uh, set the foreground color again to uh, 2B1C1F. And that will give you kind of like a nice brown. So click OK. And then we're going to press B on our keyboard to select the brush. Uh, and you guys are not going to have that. So just you're going to have this right here. So we're going to have to go to our files that you guys have, uh, you guys should have downloaded, um, which is set here. So once you've extracted the file, you're going to go ahead and install the grunge pack. And there is three brushes and the one we actually need to install is this one here. So all you have to do is just double click and that will install it into Photoshop. Make sure Photoshop is open, of course. If you, if that doesn't work, just right click and make sure you're on your brushes tool and then go to this little um, settings gear icon and go to uh, load brushes which is right here and then you're gonna have to select the grunge k1.abr file and click open and that will uh, in import it into the little um, window here so you could select it and these are the grunge uh, brushes so I'm gonna select this one here and you can see that it's very huge so what we're going to do is just press command and click to get out of that window and then press command minus to zoom out or control minus if you're on a PC. Zoom out quite a bit so you guys have some space to click. Make sure you're on your layer one uh, icon or you're on your layer one here and then just click on the edges. So what you want to do is you want to click uh, around the edges here. So just like right here would be good. Also make sure that the blend mode is set to screen. So I uh, forgot to tell you that. So make sure it's on screen and then click there and then I also want to um, uh, click right here and then uh, just to change it up a bit I'm also going to choose a different one here I'm going to choose this one command click but uh, you can see that if I want the left side to be on the bottom all you got to do is just right click and change this to 90 degrees and now it will just uh, pretty much flip it if you guys don't have this just go over to window um, and then go to brush and then go to um, here, go to brush tip shape. And then here it's at 92 degrees for the angle. We just want to put in 90 and that will allow you to flip, uh, not flip it, rotate the brush here. You could also flip it if you want, but we're going to do that later on. So not for now. So just uh, exit out of that and then click there. And once again, right there. So just like that, and that looks good. So once we're done with everything here, uh, we're going to go ahead and go and click the move tool. So we're out of that here. And I'm going to go ahead and zoom in so you guys can see what I'm doing. So go over to filter on the top and go to blur and then go to Gaussian blur. And then change the radius to 2 pixels and click OK. 
And once you have done that, we're going to go ahead and change the foreground color again. So click on the foreground color here. And for the hex code or the color, we're going to type in 857276. Uh, and that will give you like a really light brown. So click OK. And we're going to create another uh, layer. So to stay organized, I'm going to just name this um, grunge brush effect just like that and then I'm gonna create a new layer on top of all of the layers okay press B on the keyboard and we're gonna go ahead and select the roughed up grunge brushes which is in the file here which is this one here so again just double click on that it will install it into Photoshop if that doesn't work all you gotta do is just uh, right click click on the little settings icon click on load brushes and then select rough uh, brushes, uh, grunge, whatever, <laughs> and click open, and that will uh, install it here. Anyways, once we're done with that, uh, we're gonna go ahead and you know add some grunge to the corners and the bottom of the document. So we're gonna go over to window, and then we're gonna go to brush, okay? And then this will open up the um, brush window. So once we're done that, we're gonna go over to the angle, and we're gonna change that to 90 per uh, 90 degrees. The roundness should be at 100%. Spacing 25%. Spacing should be checked. And um, yeah, so once we're done with that, we're going to go ahead and flip uh, X. So we're going to click on flip Y. So this will flip it. And then after that, um, we're going to just go ahead and uh, close out of that. And then we're just going to click somewhere around here, right there. Uh, let's see. Whoops. I don't want to save that. Let me zoom out so you guys could see. Make this smaller by pressing minus on the keyboard, and I want to flip this again. So, to do that, whoops, I want to right click inside of the document, the canvas, and we're going to flip this the other way. There we go, just like that. Should be good. Okay, cool. So, once we're done with that, uh, we're going to go ahead and set the foreground color to. So we'll go here, let me change it to the move tool. Double click on the foreground color and change the hex code to 121212. And that will give you a dark, sort of like a black, but not 100% black. <laughs> Anyways, click OK. And make sure you create a new layer. I'm going to just name this, um, I don't know, uh, corner splashes. And then I'm going to create a new layer on top of all of the other layers. And we're going to go to the brush tool and then right click and make sure you have a soft brush. And make sure it's fairly large, like 1,400 pixels. Uh, I might want to make that smaller, just like that. And then all you want to do is make sure that the, the uh, hardness is set to zero. So we want a soft round brush. And then all you want to do is uh, make sure you name that to center and change the opacity to 55% percent or you can just click on that and just type in 55 percent and then click in the center here and that's where our text will be okay so once we're done with that we're gonna go ahead and add the uh, texture just to finish up the background so I'll go, we're gonna go back to finder we're gonna go, uh, we're gonna go ahead and add this texture here um, which is called seven so just click and drag that on top of here and then we're gonna go ahead and scale this to um, fit our canvas or our document so what I'm doing here is I'm holding Alt or Option on a Mac and Shift and holding both of the keys uh, down and then click on, on one of the corners and just dragging outwards and that will fill the whole entire document. And then press Command or Control Enter to accept the changes. And then we're going to go ahead and uh, we're going to change the blend mode to Multiply and that will just kind of multiply it uh, here. Anyways, so uh, yeah, once we're done with that, uh, we're going to go ahead and go, we're going to go over to uh, image. So go to image, go to adjustments and go to hue and saturation and change the uh, saturation levels to negative uh, 50 and then click OK. Cool. So uh, once we're done with that, pretty much done for here right now. Uh, but before we do that, we're going to go ahead and uh, set the foreground color. So click double click on the foreground color here and change it to 6E5F40 uh, and um, that should give you like a light green slash brownish color 
and uh, click OK. And we're going to create a new uh, layer on top of that. So uh, we're going to create a new layer on top of everything here. And I'm going to name this texture just so we keep everything, um, you know, organized. So once we're done with that, we're going to go ahead and change the blend mode to screen. And then we're going to change the opacity to uh, 35%. Click OK. And then after that, we're going to go ahead and select the brush again. So here, and then uh, just keep everything the same. So right click and make sure that the hardness is set to zero. Um, and this is, you know, set to a soft round brush. And we're going to make this uh, pretty big. I kind of want to make it a little bit smaller. Zoom out of your document, your canvas, and then just click outwards like that. So you could really see um, the effect. So I just want to click on any corners, but I would select the bottom ones here. Just click on the bottom corners and then just kind of make one a little bit bigger and one smaller. And cool. We're done with that. So uh, once we're done with that, we're going to create another layer on top of everything. So I'm going to just name this um, bottom corner uh, lights. Whoops. Okay, click OK. Cool, uh, we're done with that. So we're gonna create a new layer on top of everything. We're gonna go ahead and change the blend mode to screen. And we're gonna change the opacity to 65%. So 65%, press enter. And after that, we're gonna have to use the brush tips of the monster, splash, uh, the monster splatter brush set. So it's going to be this one here. Same thing, double click on the file there on if you're on a Mac and that will install it onto Photoshop or you could right click go to the settings icon click on load brushes select the monster splash click open and that will install it there cool so that should be the splashes and that should be all of um, these which run from uh, which run from uh, let's see 1549 through 1,000, uh, uh, 100, no, 1,574, somewhere around there. Anyways, you want to go ahead and select one that you think looks cool. And uh, we're going to go ahead and uh, we're going to flip the second brush. So to do that, it's very simple. Just go over to Window, go to Brush, Share, and that will open up the brush panel. So to, uh, you know, to apply this, it's very simple. Um, we're going to be selecting... 1517 which is this one here okay and uh, the other one is 1549 um, which is uh, 1549 this one here so these two right here cool so what you want to go ahead and do is you want to add some splatter to the sides of the document so just you know click here like that uh, I'm gonna go ahead and zoom out so I can see what I'm doing so right there would be good uh, like there and then you could uh, click on flip X and that will allow you to flip it but I want to select 1000 uh, one is this the same one I think yeah this one okay 1517 I'm gonna click flip X on the X coordinates and uh, I want to click right here that would be good cool that looks good to me uh, and we're pretty much done for that but we also have to add a inner glow onto that so just double click on the layer that you applied it to and double click on the layer and then go to inner glow. So select inner glow and then for the blend mode, we're going to choose vivid light. So select vivid light. The opacity is at 50%, noise is at zero and the, um, the color should be set to like a soft brownish color. So just move that down like that and then a little bit down like to the orange side here and we're going to choose like a tannish uh tannish yellowish color so something like that so just type in ffebc3 and click ok so something like that and then once we're done with that the technique is set to softer the source is on uh, the source is set to center and the choke is at zero and the size is at seven pixels and then the range is at 50% and jitter is at zero and the contour stays the same. Cool. So just click OK on that um, and then go to filter. Make sure you're on the same layer. Go to filter, go to uh, blur and then go to Gaussian blur. 
and change the radius to 1.5 pixels and that will just blur it just a little bit so it's not too in your face <laughs> so click OK and then um, cool so we're pretty much now done with the background so I'm gonna go ahead and rename the layer that we just added so I'm gonna just change this to side splashes like that and then what you want to go ahead and do is just group everything together besides the um, the background copy so just click on the uh, top the very top layer hold down shift and then click on the background copy press command or control if you're on a PC and press command G or control G to group that all together so now once we're done that we're gonna have to create the text and we're gonna style it and add the texture so to do that, um, we're going to go ahead and install the font first so you guys know what you're going to do. So go to Refinder and then you're going to install these You're going to install these two fonts. The first one is SI font or you could use Impact. Uh, it's the same font. I'll post um, the font downloads in the description or I could just add it. All the files will be in this little folder here. Okay, So uh, just double click on that if you're on a Mac, install it if you're on a PC. I believe you have to install it somewhere else, I'm not sure. Uh, I haven't used a PC in a very long time uh, to do this type of stuff. So just install these two fonts and once they're installed, um, we're going to go ahead and uh, press T on the keyboard to bring up the text type or the type tool. And then we're going to just click here and make sure we select the SI font, uh, which is SI, SI font regular. And then we're going to type in village and then we're going to make this fairly large. Um, I don't know, 2225. Whoops. That's not what I want. <laughs> Village. Uh, make sure this is the SI font. And this is what I want to change. 255 would be good. Press Command Enter or Control Enter to accept the changes. And let's change that to white for now. All right, that looks pretty good. All right, so once we're done with that, uh, we're going to go ahead and change the font color. So just, you know, select everything, click and select everything. Click on this little box here. It should be set to white or whatever color you have it selected to. And we're going to change the font color. So the hex code is E6 uh, and then D5, uh, B5. Yep, there we go. All right, so it's E6, D, B5. Uh, wait, E6, D5, B5. <laughs> that was a that was a little bit um, confusing because there's a lot of Ds and Bs. Anyway, so this is the color here. It's like a like a bright tannish um, brown. So once we're done with that, the second text, uh, this is optional, of course. You don't have to add it, but this is pretty much the whole point of the Walking Dead effect or the text effect is to add the, of course. So just type in the and then type in for the um, condensed font. We're going to type in Gil San, Gil San MT condensed regular, and then press the little check mark to accept changes. And we're gonna make this fairly small, so we're gonna type in 85 uh, for the uh, 85 for the pixels here, or for the text, and then press Command Enter or Control Enter to accept the changes. And we're gonna place it right here. Make sure you zoom in so you really know what you're doing here. So the, the village the village. <laughs> All right. So uh, once we're done with that, we're pretty much done here. And then we're going to go ahead and double click on each text layer. So we're just going to focus on the village here and then we can just copy the layer uh, effects and paste it onto the, and then that will just save you time. So just double click on the village text or whatever you have it uh, named to. And then we're going to go to inner glow to add some effect here or to us to add some effects. And then for the blend mode, we're going to go ahead and change it to screen. So select screen. The opacity, we're going to change that to 30%. And the noise is set to zero. The color, we are going to have to change that to... Uh, we're going to change that to D5C09F and click OK. Cool. We're set with the color there, which is like a lightish brown color. Uh, and then the technique is set to softer, the source is set on edge, choke zero, the size we want to change that to five, and the range is set to 100, jitter zero, and everything the same. So we're pretty much done with that, so click OK. And this is what we have here. So we're going to right click, click on copy layer style, and we're going to paste that onto the 
So right click, click on paste layer style, and that will apply it to the top uh, text, which is named the. Once we've done that, we're gonna have to select the text layers that you that you know that you've created, or each single text that you made, which is just the and then village. If you added a second text, just apply it to that text uh, again. You know, just repeat the steps. So once we're done with that, we're gonna go ahead and go to filter, and then we're gonna go to convert to uh, convert for smart layers. Uh, click OK, and actually, before you do that, you want to select uh, both text, all your text. So hold down Command or Control and select all of them, and then go to filter, and then click convert for smart filters, and then just click OK, and that will just make it uh, together. We'll just merge it together, in other words. All right, cool. Now, once we're done with that, we're going to have to make a copy. So uh, just uh, click and drag that down here, and I will just create a copy, which is the. Uh, before we do that, though, just name this to text. So name that text and then make a copy. So it's a little bit more organized. And drag the copied layer below the original one, which is named text. All right, so once we're done with that, we're going to have um, our text here. And uh, cool. So once we're done with that, we're going to go ahead and place the grunge background uh, on top of our text. So we're going to go over to the finder. We're going to go over to the downloads, which is here. And we're going to add um, this one here. So it's on grunge backgrounds. So just double click on that and then select the third one, which is grunge background 3.jpg. Double, uh, don't double click, just drag, click and drag it onto Photoshop here. If, if, um, if you can't do that, if you can't drag the uh, grunge background into Photoshop, if you're on Windows, <laughs> just go to File and then go to um, go to Open, and then it should be on this one here in this little folder, and then select the third one, and then click Open. But I like to do it the other way because it's a little bit quicker. Anyways, drag it on here, and then same thing: hold Alt or Option on a Mac, and then or Alt if you're on a PC, and then Shift. Click on one of the corners and drag outwards to fill it entirely and then just click the check mark and then right click on the grunge background and click create clipping mask and I will just clip it to the text here make sure it's set to um, make sure you're on the very top uh, of your layers okay cool we're done with that now we're gonna go over to um, the uh, hue and saturation so go over to image go to uh, adjustments and then go to hue and saturation and then we're going to change the hue, change that to 4, and the saturation to negative 30. And then just click OK. All right, we're almost done. Um, so now we're going to have to darken the text. So to do that, we're going to go ahead and go to the brush tool again. So press B on your keyboard. And once we're done with that, we're going to go ahead and open up the brush panel. So go over to filter, go to, or go to window, and then go to brush. The shortcut is F5, if you're wondering. And cool, once we're done that, we're gonna have to pick a soft round brush. So I'll go to the top, select this one, which is named 30, I believe. It could be different depending on which, uh, how many brushes you installed and how many you have. So once we're done with that, we're gonna have to modify the settings here. So we're gonna have to add a shape dynamic. So click on this little check mark, make sure you click on the name. The size jitter, we're gonna change that to 55%. And then the controls uh, off, minimum diameter, everything should be the same here. And then after that, we're going to go ahead and add a color dynamics. So select color dynamics. Everything should be the same here, 100%. Cool, cool. And then everything should be set to 0%. After that, uh, we're going to add a transfer. Click on transfer. And the opacity set to 100%. Control, everything is set to zero and smoothing should be checked. Yeah, all right, so we're done with that. And then all we have to do now is we just click um, out of this, select your text, so click on text. Let me go ahead and zoom in. Um, all right, so once we're done with that, make sure you're on your grunge background first and then create a new layer on top of all of the layers. And we're gonna name this uh, to brush, yeah, brush. And then we're gonna change the blend mode to multiply and then after that, we're going to right click on the brush layer and then create, uh, we're going to click on create a clipping mask. And then we're going to set the foreground color to this hex code or this color. It is A5, um, A196. Whoa, I did not type that in right. <laughs> it is A5, 
five one a five no a five a one um nine six sorry this this pop filter in the mic is like right in my face anyways it's a five a one nine six and click OK and then for the background color we're gonna change that again oh yeah I told you there's gonna be a lot of changing colors so we're gonna change that to uh, B eight uh, nine seven and then six C just like that okay and then click OK and then now we're gonna go ahead and just make your brush size bigger by pressing the left and right bracket keys left will make it smaller and right will make it bigger and then all you want to do is make sure you're on your brush um, layer make sure you're not on any other layers because that will mess it up and then just start clicking and that will make it much darker so I would what I would do is just like uh, I don't know click towards the center here or the outside edges is where you really want to focus on and then uh, just you know have fun with this just click don't add don't um, click too many times and make it really dark because you want some highlights in there. So just click on the edges, make maybe in the middle to make it a little bit dark on the outside edges here. Just like that, maybe here. Right there would be good, maybe here. Just kind of make it a little bit random. Uh, just click everywhere you can, like that, maybe here. And I think that looks pretty good. All right, so once we're done with that, maybe maybe make it a little bit darker. Just like that, I think that looks pretty good. So now we're gonna go ahead and set the foreground color to another color, so double click on the foreground color, set that to FFFADA, and that will set it to a nice like light yellow. And then uh, after that, we're gonna go ahead and create a new layer. So create a new layer on top of brush, name it uh, Splatter. So splatter, let me go ahead and zoom out here, pressing command minus. All right, so we have splatter now, and then we're gonna go ahead and create a, uh, a clipping mask. So right click and click create clipping mask, and that will just clip it to brush and everything below that, which will affect the text. And then after that, we're gonna, we're gonna go ahead and change the uh, blend mode to screen. So select screen, and then change the opacity to 70%. So 70% press uh, enter and then after that we're gonna go ahead and um, add the roughed up grunge brushes so I'll go to finder I'm go and get out of that and then here it is the roughed uh, grunge brushes so double click on that and that will install it into Photoshop and once it's on there um, we're gonna have to go ahead and select the brush so it, it should be um, 797 here so select 797 Press command click to get out of that window zoom in and all you want to do is just click uh, until you fill the whole thing don't add too much because then it's gonna look really weird it's gonna look fake so just click once and then here will look good um, just a little bit not too much I think there will look good um, so I think that's enough so you can see how I added it from here to here all right so we're pretty much done with that after we're done with that press um, go back to your move tool and then uh, we're gonna go ahead and command make sure you're on the splatter here we're gonna command click inside the thumbnail of text so click on this and that will highlight your text make sure you're not on make sure you're not selecting the text copy make sure it's on text and then after that we're gonna go ahead and make sure that we're on the splatter layer here and we're gonna press command J to make a copy of the splatter here uh, and our text actually and then after that uh, we're gonna go ahead and rename the copied layer we're gonna name that to horizontal horizontal let's say spell horizontal right okay um, so cool once we're done that we're gonna zoom in and we're gonna go ahead and change the blend mode to screen and uh, let's see okay first let's change this to vertical um, Oh, and then okay so once we're done with the horizontal uh, layer we're gonna make another copy of the same one and press command J and then we're gonna name this one vertical so once we're done with that uh, it should be set to screen and the opacity is set to 100% okay so it should be set to 100% so once we're done with that 
we're going to go ahead and select the horizontal layer and make sure you zoom in and then we're going to hit the left arrow key six times to move the brush six pixels to the left. So, so one, two, three, four, five, six, that will move it six pixels to the left. And then once you're done with that, um, we're going to go ahead and make the uh, text selection. So make sure you're on horizontal on the horizontal layer, press command or control and select text and then press delete and that will delete the horizontal text from the text uh, from the text we selected. So now we're going to do the same thing for vertical except we're going to do it upwards because it's vertical and we're going to move that upwards four times. So four pixels. So one, two, three, four and that will move it four pixels upwards. Make sure you're on vertical layer and then press command or control and select the text uh, layer here and make sure you're on click on make sure you click on the thumbnail, press delete and that will delete the text. So press command D to deselect. All right, so cool. Now, once we're done that with that, press command zero to fill it with the thumbnail there. Just press command minus or control minus and that will look like this, but we're not done. We're almost done. We're gonna go ahead and select the eraser tool. So press command or just press uh, E on the on your uh, keyboard or just select the eraser tool here by going on the left and just select uh, the eraser tool. And then after that, we're going to go ahead and select a soft brush. So make sure it's not on hard. The size, uh, you want to make that, you know, just a little bit bigger. Um, like, I don't know, 35 would be good. And the hardness set to zero. And then after that, um, I actually want to make it a little bit bigger like that. You just want to like go like this a little bit uh, just to make it a little bit random, just to erase some, uh, just to erase the little particles on the outside. So make sure you do it on horizontal, uh, on the horizontal layer, and then just erase it like that just a little bit. And then go again with the vertical and just erase a little bit from there. So now if you zoom in, you can see uh, try not to erase too much of it. So let me go and go back a little bit. Uh, whoops. I think that's good. And horizontal, make it a little bit bigger. So just like that should be good. And then vertical, we want to go again. So just like that. Try not to erase too much or else it's going to look really weird. <laughs> so, uh, once we're done with that, we're going to convert each of these two layers to a, uh, smart object. So, Click on the horizontal layer, right click and click convert to smart object. Go to vertical, right click and click convert to smart object. And that will just uh, make it to a smart object. In other words, make it to its own layer instead of having it to a text. Um, or uh, yeah, the text. So after that, um, we're going to change the blend mode to screen. So cool, they're both set to screen. And we're almost done. Now we have to select each of the vertical and horizontal layers and change the smart objects layer to a blur. So we're going to go over to filter on the top. We're going to go to blur and we're going to go to Gaussian blur. And then we're going to change the radius to 0 0.7 or 0 0.7. Click OK. And then we're going to do the same thing for the horizontal layer. Go to filter, go to blur, go to Gaussian blur, and then just apply the same thing, 0 0.7. Pixels, click OK, and cool. We're pretty much done now. Uh, now we just have to add some finishing touches to this. So select the text copy layer, which is this one here. And then we're going to go over to filter. We're going to go to blur, and then we're going to go over to uh, motion blur. And once we're done with that, we want to set the angle to 90 degrees. Yours is probably going to be set to 0, and the distance to 10 pixels. And then just click OK. So we're pretty much done now. So this is the effect that you should get. If you guys liked this tutorial, please, please leave your rating below. If you guys want to see more Halloween tutorials for Photoshop, then please hit that like button. That will be awesome. Comment if you guys need some help or if you guys want to stop by and say hello to King Tut's Pro. <laughs> and if you want to make his day, just, you know, say hello or um, I'll try to get to you. And uh, I will catch you guys on my next video. Until then, peace out, take care, and enjoy your day.